Good morning. Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to Yum Bai Talk, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan. We're out here at a bush location and uh, heading back to Weewak today. So join along. This is a really cool airstrip and got some side slope and long grass to deal with today. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Igniter's on, aux bus, make sure my fuel is on. Taws system start. test, okay. So my NG passes 14%, introduce my fuel. And watching the ITT rate as it comes up to see if it looks like it's gonna go into the yellow. And it's really slow today, so six, on the ITT. All right, igniter's off, fuel pump off, generator on, get my prop forward, alternator on, aux bus, V2, and we will throw at least our strobe down. Now we'll get our landing light here shortly. So I'm in, uh, my engine inlet is in bypass today just because there's a lot of loose cut grass and I don't want to be sucking that into the engine. We got 530 pounds of fuel on board. It's a 35 minute flight back to WeWAC today. So just a short flight. I don't have any seats on board. I just dropped off about 1,600 pounds or 730 kgs worth of cargo for some house builds that are going on out here. Midday 1267 November Tango Echo Taxi. So we can actually get a hold of them today. Get my flaps in. My trim is already set up. So fuel caps and selectors, good. Controls, good. Turn Betty off on this one. Does the tolls inhibit to let me know? Which is an instrument. Our weight today is 5190 minus all the seats back there. So another 100 kg, so about 200 pounds. So we're under, we're basically 4,900 pounds. So our rotate's gonna be 52 knots, crazy slow. If we had to come back in for an emergency, 60 knots for our VREF. Our flaps are set, indicated, and verified at 20 degrees. Our trim is done, our board. The first cone I can see up there, I'm gonna be 35 knots at that point. If I'm not 35 knots at that point, full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, cut up, pull off, and shut off. Back my door if I'm going off. If I am going off, I'm gonna go to the left into the bushes and trees. And after takeoff, pitch for 85, consider PL, consider feather, left hand turn to lower terrain down towards the river. 80 full flaps, cut off, pull off, shut off. Emergency button, masters, and crack my door. Igniters are on, lights are on. We'll get SAR here once we get in the air, can't get them on the ground. 30 degrees, we're nearly sea level, 500 feet today. So, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses will be at 1540 on our uh, torque for 1590. And heading back at 10,000 feet. All right, harnesses idle, go, good. All right, because we're on a side slope, I'm gonna have my aileron correction in, and that's gonna help with the plane wanting to go downhill, as well as riding my right brake a little bit. All right. There we go, it's too slippery. 1540. Here's piece of line, there's 35, continuing. And there's airborne. All right, climb out at 740 on ATT. I can definitely feel I've got quartering tail when it's kind of pushing me along sideways. I climb out around 85 knots or around seven and a half degrees on our angle of climb. And that will usually give me around 85. Now the wind's pushing, it's hitting this little hill below me and it's just pushing me up at 1400 feet per minute climb right now at 90 knots, so I'll definitely utilize that. All right, we're a thousand feet over the airstrip now. I lower the nose, increase my airspeed over 85 knots. I'm going to reduce to 10 degrees of flaps. And I give it a little bit of back pressure as it as the nose kind of goes over. 
automatic trim as well, but just do a tiny bit more. Then over 90 and climb, you're gonna go zero degrees of flaps. Then also start getting a little bit of that right rudder trim out. Now that our speed is increasing over 100 knots, you don't need quite as much rudder trim. All right, bring my prop back to 2,000 RPM. MIITT at 720 for the climb out. We can turn our landing light off. I'll leave my pulse light going, our engine inlet back to normal, and our igniters are turned off. We're not too far off of my course. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my autopilot on heading mode and nav nav. That way, uh, we're close enough, it'll just connect, never mind. And then I'll trim it out. This doesn't have a vertical speed um, hold for the autopilot, so I'm just gonna trim for my vertical speed. And then once it gets close enough, then I'll make the adjustment to uh, capture the altitude as well. Right now that I've basically outside of this valley where Yom Tuck is located, I can probably get a hold of my flight following or my SAR is what we call it here, search and rescue. I departed about three minutes ago. Bedang 126.7 November Tango Echo departure. November Tango Echo, Medang, go ahead. Morning again, November Tango Echo, departed Yombai Talk, 0-9er on climb, 1-0000. Tracking 344, estimating a WEWAC 44. Okay, November Tango Echo, traffic is Mike Alpha Hotel. Tesla Caravan departed WEWAC 4 Hagen. What time, 5-6. One climb, one 1,000, estimating at gap 30. Copy, Mike, Alpha Hotel, one 1,000, November, Tango Echo. All right, that is an MAF plane that just left WEWAC from Mount Hagen. So he's basically going the exact same direct track, except maybe like a mile off. So anyways, I'm gonna let him know here shortly where I am. I'm only going up to 10,000, he's at 11,000. But we will be coming pretty close uh, on the same track. I thought on this flight, because it's kind of a boring flight, going back is absolutely beautiful weather. You couldn't ask for better weather here in Papua New Guinea. That I kind of give you a tour of my office here every day. Uh, if you're not familiar with the G1000 or you're not familiar with the Kodiak, this is the Quest Kodiak, um, the Kodiak 100. So I thought I'd just kind of show you what I get to look at every single day and explain what it is. If you think this is boring, you can skip down. I'll leave down below where you can just skip past all of this. But if you are interested, you can stay tuned and just watch uh, on what I do. So anyways, and also a couple of you guys have asked what these black things up here are. They're a seatbelt lock, so I can lock them so that they're locked no matter what, or I can release them and I can take them off. But they still have uh, like a inertial reel lock real quick, but it still lets you move. I'm just gonna start up here in the corner up here. This is just a little, um, Thing that we put up ourselves just for a quick reference it gives us our our vx our vy it gives us different glide speeds according to different weights in the aircraft see that with the reflection anyways then these are just our standby gauges we actually have two different computers one computer runs our pfd our primary flight display and then our secondary ones over here are actually run by a completely different computer so if for some reason one of them were to go out, we have this red button here, the reversionary mode, and it basically makes all three of them exactly the same. So in case we were to have an electro elect electrical failure or something, we can turn off our avionics bus down here. It will turn off these two screens and we can put everything onto this screen. We can even do um, our map right here. Oh. Anyways, and then also in case our primary flight display goes, we also have the reversionary mode over on this one. And we can have the same thing on these two screens. So we also have the stall warning test here and our overspeed governor check. I check that in the mornings on the first flight. I don't check it on every flight, just the very first flight of the day. We have our master, which runs the primary flight display and our avionics bus, which does the other screens. Our aux bus does our environmental controls down here which is just our blowers front and back and also our heaters 
Yes, at times we do actually use the heaters. I was using the other day on my whole flight because it was a dawn departure and it was, it would have probably got down to 60, 61 or two degrees in the cockpit. Well, if you're not familiar with the G1000 at all and you want to fly these on a flight simulator and whatever else, let me just quickly go over what, what you could be looking for. The Nav 1 and Nav 2, that does all of your OBS stuff down here. So if you're doing a VOR approach or an ILS or whatever, you change it right here. So right now, our Nav 1 is associated with this little box here. Our Nav 2 is associated with this. So I have it on the GPS in route mode. So it's telling me I'm 67 miles from WeWAC. We hit our CDI button. Let me just, so it doesn't move. There we go. That changes over to 110.1. It says localizer because it thinks that we're in Port Moresby. Hit it again. It switches to our NAV2 up here. And now it thinks we're over in NADZAB airspace doing a VOR, which is going to give you all the data right here. So I'm switching it back over to GPS. This is our airspeed here. These are our nice little flight director boxes and this little green circle, if you can see it. That is our, um, our flight predictor. So basically, wherever that is, is where the plane is going to go. So if I want to fly on the horizon, that white line, I put the little green circle right over top of it, and I'll be straight and level. All right, now that we're leveled off at 10,000, I'm going to go ahead and bring my power lever here back, and it's going to bring my torque back to 1250. That's going to be my cruise. And then my MP, or my prop, I'm going to keep it at 2,000 RPM. All right, just jumping back over here to the G1000 really quick. This is our airspeed here, our altitude. The little boxes are just to let me know if I'm actually on the actual course at the specific altitude. It makes it really easy for shooting approaches. Very easy, actually. Down here is our, our wind. Also, this is our predicted wind. There's our ground speed, our true airspeed our distance and then all of our comms up here. So that's pretty much everything down here. This is just letting me know that I'm in engine inlet is normal. We have our comms here and our comms here. Those are both exactly the same. Get my fuel turned off on my right side. You can see it's like way out of balance. This airplane on like climbs and descents, it only sucks off the, the right tank, or correction, the left tank. No, it only does the right tank obviously because it's low. Anyways, this screen is pretty much the same. I have it on the big map page. A lot of people fly it on this page, so you can have the information up here. But I like it on the big map page. These are all just my engine instruments, my torque, my ITT. Again, you can Google all these. If you don't know what they are, you'll get a better description than what I'm going to be able to give you. All right, now that our fuel is, Evened out, gonna throw my fuel back on and start up my checklist. We're just six minutes to go. My selectors and my brakes are good. Our TAWS is enabled right now. We'll just leave it that way. My weight, we're at 5,000 pounds. So actually we're less because I don't have any seats on board. So as slow as we can come in today is 60 knots for our V-Ref. Once we get within 10 nautical miles, I'll flip on my lights. I haven't heard anybody on the radios letting me know that there's anybody in this area. And Madang Flight Service has not let me know either. So anyways, we'll give them another call once we get a little bit closer. Also, I forgot I need to let the people know what time I'm going to actually be getting there so that they can bring my next load. I'm going to be landing at 9, 9.40. Oh, I have my V2 tracker here. I can quickly just text people. I can actually text their, directly to their phone. All right, ETA 940. Need fuel. I know it's only five minutes out. They're probably following along with the with their computer so they can see that I already left Yum by Talk. I'm on my way back, but I should have texted them way back then so that they could make sure that they have my commercial passengers ready to go. All stations, WEWAC 126, decimal 7, November, Tango Echo, 10 miles to the south on the 164 radio, passing 4,500 on descent. Circuit time 40, WEWAC will be flying overhead for a left downwind runway 10, WEWAC. All right, landing light is on. 
Hey, an inlet, we'll do inlet here shortly. Our board, if we do need to go around for any reason, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73. Maneuver is required, come back around, reset our torque at 740 for best climb out. Our prop and harness, we'll get when we get probably around three miles to go. We can do our harness now, and we'll call up our SAR here shortly when we get a little bit closer in the circuit. So WEWAC, I, I don't know a ton about it, but I do know that it was used back in World War II. They actually had two different runways back then, like a backup one to the regular one. So this is, I don't even know if this is, I think this is actually the backup one, but there's another one, uh, an old runway that's just now like a basically a road in a town strip. About maybe like four miles up the coast a little bit further. And so I've heard is why they had that is in case one of them got destroyed with bombs and stuff. So actually WEWAC actually does have some still bomb craters off to the south side of the field, just off more inlet. They all huge like pits just filled with water now. But I've been told that those are little bomb craters and stuff, which is pretty cool, I think. And then there are actually some World War II airplanes, obviously all crashed in these jungles down here. I went out and saw one years ago. It was a Japanese like smaller airplane, probably about the size of like a Baron or something like that. Out in the jungle, there really wasn't much left of it. A couple pieces. You could see parts of the engine and like the landing gear, but pretty much the wings were completely gone. The fuselage had about maybe like eight feet section left of it, but yeah, it was still cool nonetheless to see something like that. All right, we're four nautical miles out. Push my prop forward. Reduce my power to around probably 600 foot pound of torque. That's gonna allow me to slow down as I'm getting into the pattern. All stations, WeWalk 1267, November Tango Echoes in the circle. We'll be flying overhead, left for a left downwind runway, 10 zero, WeWalk. Break, Medang 1267, November Tango Echo in the circuit, WeWalk, cancel, SAR. All right, there's below 140. Medang, Medang 1267, November Tango Echo in the circuit, WeWalk, cancel, SAR. November Tango Echo. Oops, I had her turned down. All right, lights and inlet are done. Prop and harness is done. SAR is done. Autopilot is off. And on this one, let's see. We've got 11 knots of wind coming up here. I think it should be calm down there. I'm gonna try to do just like a quick little emergency uh, practice procedure. Basically bring my power all the way to 270 foot pound of torque. That will actually, uh, 250 I think, or 270. One of the two is going to give me simulate if I were to feather the aircraft. Oh, there's 250 foot pound of torque. Uh, I'm going to just try to land on the thousand foot marker and not adjust the power. The prop is for 250 pounds. Don't touch my flaps. 92 knots is going to be our best glide today. Once I start turning, I'm going to be having like a 1400 foot descent rate, I bet. And we've got seven knots now. Wind sucks calm. I'm gonna start turning towards the field right now. All right, 1,600 feet on the descent. Crank it over now. This thing drops so fast. Still 1,500. Five hundred. All right. First, sink rate. Yep, thank you. First degree of Pull collapse. up. Sink rate. Pull up. Sink rate. Three degrees of collapse. Okay. And last degree of collapse. Just to give me a little bit extra boost. Float, float, float. Zero degrees of collapse. Oh, I'm gonna float past it. Way past it. <laughs> All right. There we go. I should have got those flaps out sooner. If you're wondering why I had flaps taken out when I was in close to ground effect, basically I can drop my flaps out 
nest is basically once I'm in ground effect, it's gonna let me get on the ground a lot sooner. What I should have done is had those flaps out sooner or just not even put in the last 30 degrees or 35 degrees of flaps. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this flight. Uh, thanks for coming along. Please give me a like if you do enjoy this kind of content. Consider subscribing because I put videos out every single week. And uh, have a great day.